For years of Megara's life, she was broken and depressed, for she had relinquished her soul to save a man she loved who did not love her back. But who could have been so selfish and manipulative to Meg? Well, today we're going to dive into this long-running mystery to attempt to discover the identity of this boorish, cruel jerk of an ex-boyfriend. Hello, I'm Isaac from Watso Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. On my channel, I focus on spreading magic by examining Disney films, so if you are new here, consider subscribing. And if you're a huge Disney fan who would like to go deeper into the Watso community, who would like to talk to me and some other fantastic fun people friends more personally, then the place to do that is over on my Discord server. You can gain access to that on my Patreon, which is linked in the description. When the 1980s were coming to a close and the 90s were beginning, a new a new wave of creative projects were released by Disney that revitalized the animation industry. Classic stories were coming to life in wonderful and magical new ways, and since this era began, there's been a shift to creating more dynamic, relatable, and complex characters and relationships. In Walt Disney Animation's Hercules, one element of the human experience that was acknowledged more prominently in this hero's quest was the idea of breakups. Often relationships are a part of life that come and go. I know that roller coaster is one that I ride, but in those transitions, which can be amicable or messy, frequently someone gets hurt. And there are few Disney characters who know this as well as Meg. Although Megara may seem purely pragmatic, empowered, and tough, the truth is that when she was growing up, she had a kind of naivety to her. Similarly to the mythological tales of Megara, Meg was innocent, loyal, and kind. But much like Hercules' mythological second wife, Daenerya, Meg also preserved her beauty and fiercely independent nature. Even though Meg had her sarcasm and strength, she couldn't help but feel a desire to be accepted, which is why she has an embarrassing past as a cheerleader. Our little Megara was a, <gasps> a cheerleader! And in her youth, it seems she had a desire to pursue love. When Meg fell in love with the man who would one day abandon her, she cherished and romanticized the connection, placing greater meaning in the relationship than he had. Even though he didn't care for her to the same extent, Meg feels, when looking back on it, that he wasn't truly honest with her, which I think comes through in Meg's cynicism about the world. <laughs> you wanted to be petty and dishonest? Everybody's not like that. Yes, they are. Meg didn't see through his facade and his lies. Years ago, she played into his arrogance and allowed herself to be obsessed and blinded by her partner's charm. If there's a prize for rotten judgment, I guess I've already won that. That's ancient history, been there, done that. Meg was initially deeply infatuated with her partner. It feels so good when you start out. But she couldn't see who he truly was, which eventually led her to get hurt. When the man she loved was dying, Meg was willing to do whatever it would take to keep him alive, for she believed in love and believed in the good intentions of her partner. But that was taken advantage of. That man allowed Meg to save him by offering her soul to be eternally in servitude to Hades, god of the underworld. She sacrificed her own life for his. You sold your soul to me to save your boyfriend's life. As promised, her boyfriend was revived, but the truth was he didn't love her like she originally had believed. After regaining his life, he heartlessly left Meg for another woman, leaving Meg alone and a slave to a god. And how does this creep thank you? by running off with some babe. For many years, Meg gave up men. Hey, I've sworn off manhandling. And she closed herself off. Sometimes it's better to be alone. Nobody can hurt you. Meg became jaded and cynical. She had difficulty trusting the intentions of others and waded through life as a minion of Hades. For many years, she just couldn't summon the courage to love again. And it was all because of... Well, there's no one in mythology who could have hurt her. In the ancient tales of Megara, she has no other suitors than Hercules. After Hercules drives out Menaeans out of Thebes for Megara's father, King Creon, Megara marries Hercules to show the kingdom's gratitude for his feats, and they were together throughout the rest of her life. Hercules' second wife, though, Daenerya, 
seems to be more like the Meg we know from Disney's Hercules, for this girl had some options in her kingdom. As the beautiful and charming princess of Caledon, she was sought after by many suitors. Even some gods ventured to woo the royal, and Hercules was entranced as well. After Megara passed away in mythology, Hercules declared his intentions to marry the amazing woman, Denaria. But while many other suitors submitted to Hercules, the river god of Achelous was unwilling to allow a mortal hero to take the woman he desired without a fight. The two beings clashed in a battle for Dionysus' hand in marriage, and after a long struggle, Hercules arose victorious. But even though Dinaria had many interested partners, it is believed that she had no interest in any of them. She had no desire or past relationship with these men. It was only after she met Hercules that she fell in love. But Meg in Disney's Hercules didn't have that luxury of only falling for the man she would marry. To make Meg a more emotionally raw and real person, she was stripped of her mythological royalty and her peer status, and what we got was a complex and intriguing individual. It's kind of insane to think about, but Meg is one of the few Disney characters with a previous relationship discussed. Even though most relationships can't work out seamlessly, and it's actually through the many heartbreaks and broken bonds that lead to the happily ever afters many desire, understandably so that's not always the stories we see. To get a glimpse into the state of regret, shame, and heartbreak, we were given Meg, and eventually Disney expanded upon those struggles by revealing more about her love story. In the Hercules the Animated Series episode titled Hercules and the Atelian Amphora, they explore Meg before her heartbreak and terrible deal with Hades. What we learn is at some point during her dating days, she went on a date with Adonis, Prince of Thrace. You seem to know Adonis pretty well. Yeah, I went on one blind date with a jerk. Frankly, I'd like to forget the whole thing. In Hercules the Animated Series, Adonis is the selfish, elitist, slothful heir to Thrace. He would disregard others, was arrogant and self-centered, was condescending and mean-spirited, but he had the looks of a god. Oh man. Megara! So, you came all the way just to see me. How charming. Of course, who could blame you? There's so much to see. In Greek mythology, Adonis grew to become an astonishingly handsome mortal that was desired by both Persephone, queen of the underworld, and Aphrodite, the goddess of love. He was personified as the epitome of male perfection with long golden hair, tan skin, a buff build, and chiseled Gaston-like features. Disgusted by her attraction to Adonis with the help of Hercules, Meg does get the chance to cope with that date by being drenched in leaf water along with Hercules, which wiped away Meg and Hercules' first meeting and the memories of her time with Adonis. Now, we never see Meg again at this age in the series, and I can understand why some would assume then that Adonis couldn't have been the boyfriend who used her to save his own life, because she lost the memory of him. But I don't think that's the case. I don't think Megara was done with him just yet. Not only is Adonis the only other person who we know Meg has dated other than Hercules, but he fits the archetype who would do this to Meg. As a conceited and manipulative person, Adonis would surely be capable of convincing Meg he loves her so she would sacrifice herself for him. And we know he has been able to connect with her before, even when she's attempting to resist him. Adonis was a man who could entrap women to obsess over him. I don't want to forget a guy. He's a jerk. And I only went out with him once, but I can't get the vain, arrogant prince out of my mind. And even though Meg may have forgotten him, Adonis still seems to be interested in her within the episode, which means that even though she doesn't remember him, he could still be in her life. A man as beautiful and purely entrancing as him, who had sway over Meg at one point, could create that type of connection again. He could entangle himself in Meg's mind almost as if it was magic. Except the truth, you're under my spell. The erasure of Meg's memories may have eased her mental burden, but without those memories, she no longer could remember the terrible nature of Adonis, which actually gave the prince another chance of being with her. As a girl who was young, hadn't experienced heartbreak, and lost the memories of the person she desired to distance herself from, I think Meg was doomed to fall under his trance again. I think when Meg returned to Thebes, Adonis used his charm, good looks, and his previous 
this knowledge on Meg from their date to manipulate and control her. I believe he brought her into his life again with his godlike beauty and charisma and constructed a shallow relationship with Meg that she interpreted was filled with love. The memoryless and romantic Meg I think fell for Adonis and I think he was the first man Meg believed was worth saving with her own life. But over time, she's learned that's the cost of love. People always do crazy things when they're in love. I'm happy Disney forged the story of Meg in a different direction than the mythological beings she was based off of, for she shows people that it's okay to have relationships that might not work. That sometimes strong, independent, and good people can't see the badness in others, and there's no reason we need to bear the burden of those mistakes for our entire lives. Along the way to happy endings, there are a lot of mishaps that change our lives, and that's a reality of living. Meg is fierce, but allows herself to be open to love and acts selflessly for those she cares for. I think at one point, though, that love, kindness, and generosity was taken advantage of by the Prince of Thrace. Adonis. But now I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think Adonis is the ex-boyfriend Meg gave her life to protect? Let me know your thoughts on this matter in the comments and over on my Discord. To see me talk about Meg more, you can find the link to my Hercules playlist in the description, along with some other amazing videos I think you might enjoy. And if you'd like to continue to see more magical discussions like this one, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and the beautiful bell if you're new. Thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon who are amazing supporters of my videos. And as always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.